What's up guys, Jez here from Whisker Fight and welcome to another episode of Whisker Fight TV, your favourite whiskey TV show where I tell you guys about my favourite bottles of whiskey that I picked up this week and Claire is pulling the pin so we know we're in for a good time. Now, I actually don't have a read on my watch at the moment because Apple Watch could not reach my iPhone so I don't know how this is going to go, whether it's going to do anything, meh. We will work it out. If not, I'll record the whole thing and uh, yeah, well, we'll see how we go. So I will get my trusty whisker fire glass and I'll tell you about the bottle we'll be pouring this week. So I have a bottle of Few Bourbon, as you guys can see. So up in front, it is episode 114, which is not episode 13, like I called it last week and then recorrected myself. Pop the bottle. Oh, disappointing. Long pour. Oh. That's why we can't have sliced bread. It's a little spill. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. You let me know if that counts or not. The little trip. Just going to the bar. It's fine. A uh, few bourbon, as I said, 93 proof. 100 and... Not 100. Uh, <laughs> 93 proof, 46.5%. ABV, new chart, American oak. Age is... This is where it gets interesting... On the back of the bottle, I read that it is mashed, fermented, distilled, aged at least one year in charred new oak barrels. So is this juice one year old? Well, uh, I don't know, but it tells me on the back it's aged for at least one year. So I know two years for bourbon, but it says at least one year and it's bourbon. So let's uh, let's hope it's a little older than uh, one year. Uh, price I paid was just under 100 bucks, and in the US you're looking at about $50 a bottle, which isn't too bad, 70% corn, 20% northern rye, and 10% two-row malt, uh, which is slightly different to like what we normally get, because we normally just get like 70, 20, 10, and it's just like corn, rye, uh, malted barley, so they're actually giving me a little bit more of a breakdown this time, gives me a lot more to work with. Now, let me crack into uh, my little show script and then we'll uh, we'll kick it off with some tasting notes. So, a few spirits hailing from Evanston, Illinois, uh, founded in 2011 by Paul Heleco, and the distillery name was taken from Francis Elizabeth Willard's initials, which is makes few, makes sense, right? Surely. Maybe it's a cheeky little Raz. Maybe they're just, I don't know, poking fun. But she was a staunch supporter of Prohibition, which is, I guess it's funny because they used the name. Ha, you guys get it. Don't need to explain it. And she was one of the many in Everston that ensured it stayed a dry city from 1855 all the way up to 1972. This few bourbon is aged in small oak barrels, uh, ranging from 20 litres to 120 litres, uh, and utilising some of that Minnesota oak, which has a shorter growth and a much tighter grain. So it's, uh, it's very interesting, and that's one of the things I noticed in this pour as well. So straight off the bat, I do enjoy that colour. So. It's got a good nose on this sucker. It's got a flat collar note there as well. I didn't get that, but it's um maybe it's a flat collar. Hmm. I'm gonna add that in. I'm gonna I'm gonna back that in. Like a flat collar note. Uh, there's a smoky campfire vibe going on. That better not have stopped. If that stopped, I'm gonna be mad. No, we are still recording. Good, good. I don't have my watch on, as I said, so we're, we're struggling through here. Oak. You, you can really like tell this is using Minnesota oak, whether it's like me just read it and then going, yeah, it's Minnesota oak there. This, this oak has got like a weird funk to it. It's not your typical like American oak. Wait, why does it say, hold on now. I put cask American oak 
and they're using Minnesota oak. Oh no, it must be. No, I just wrote it out of habit. New chard oak. See, this is why people are asleep at the wheel here. It's a minute. So, oak. there we go. New chard, Minnesota oak. That is why it has a weird funk to it. Also got like these like young grain notes. Maybe a hint of cherry, that smoky campfire, black cola. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, for the taste, taste, palate. Man, same same. Super thin viscosity. It's kind of got like this toasted sugariness just working its way across the palate. And it's like a light numbness down the side. Can't really say I've got a heap of that uh, typical rye heat, but it's, uh, yeah, it's like a nice numbing note there. And just for the finish, It's got, it's funny, I'm gonna say this again, and you guys are gonna be like, you need to wash your glassware. It's got those wheat bix vibes again, where it's like super young grains. It obviously hasn't had enough time to work out the kinks, but it's got those wheat bix vibes and it kind of like finishes it off with this really tannic oak note, which is from those Minnesota barrels. It's very interesting. It's like over oaked, over oaked wheat mix. I don't know if that's a thing. It should be. Once again, very interesting. Let me break it into the by barrel pass. Now, it is, I'd like my first one was, it is not bad for something new to the Australian market. I know this isn't properly distributed here because this was a single import from the guys at the Drink Society, but it, uh, it was definitely interesting all the same. That campfire smoke as well was really unexpected, not something I'd typically expect for like a bourbon. The only time I got like a really good campfire smoke was from uh, one of the High West releases and the uh, smoked oak, what was it? I can't even remember. The bars packed up, being packed up as well. So I am, I guess, pushing out content as quickly as I can. Uh, so I don't even have the bottle here. Um, made by Balcones, the smoked oak something. Up. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, and yeah, the third one is it's basically breakfast in a glass again. So <laughs> if um, if you guys really love wheat bix, maybe this is the one for you. Just go young grains. You'll find the the wheat bix in every bottle. Um, maybe it's how many wheat bix can you do? But it's few spirits. Hmm fun to play with all right i will leave it there though because i'll have to chop it up a little bit but thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed uh this i guess this is a few spirits a few bourbon it's um it's interesting i'm gonna mark it down as a bar because uh yeah i i don't think i'd pick up another bottle only because it's just that wee bix note that gets me i'm like oh. like penelope last week was okay I, I definitely felt those like pappy vibes because it was like weeder than everything else, but kind of coming into this, it's like, uh, do I really want another bottle of wheat bix? I don't know. Who knows? I know I don't, but thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, this nice little um, short form piece content for your whiskey Wednesday. I'm Jez. I'm out. Stay thirsty. Peace. Oh, I can't even. No, wait. You guys can just deal with the outro.